And there is another term involved that is the density, rho. Uh, the fluid we are handling is compressible, therefore density is changing with respect to time. The rho is not constant. Rho is not constant. If rho is constant, there is the, it, it's not possible to have acoustic wave. So rho, again, is a rho function of time as well as possibly space. So what if we can immediately see in acoustics is a pressure, density, and velocity are the physical parameters that are involved in acoustic wave propagation. Therefore, it is obvious that we have to know very well about the physical meaning of pressure, velocity, and the density. So our job later on is to understand what acoustic pressure really means and what the acoustic density change means and what is the uh, meaning of acoustic velocity. What is the relation between three parameters? Before, for example, for the string case, you know that the wave propagation along string is governed by this wave equation, partial differential equation, and we know that this wave equation can be solved if we know the boundary condition as well as initial condition. Okay? Of course, if you look at the text, you can find out the energy propagating along the string and so on and so on. But as long as we know the, the y, the value of y, then we can calculate or estimate the energy or power propagating in a string. But for compressible, fa cons compressible fluid case, those three parameters are linked together, and we have to understand the meaning of these three parameters. And that's the distinct difference between one-dimensional string wave and one-dimensional acoustic wave. OK? So now we have to find the way to understand the relation between density and velocity, for example. And we now know the relation P and U, that is pressure difference in space or pressure gradient in space is equal to rho du dt. OK. What is the relation between this and this, or this and this? OK. Let's again look at what's going to happen on infinitesimal element. OK. Suppose that some mass is coming in in this section, okay, by the rate you draw u, okay, and the total amount of mass coming in in this section would be rho u multiplied by s, mass flux. Okay, S is mass flux. And what about mass coming out? Then I can write rho u coming out. Well, I have a constant section S, so I can write that way.
okay, if one mass coming in and one mass coming out, then the rate of change of mass inside, I mean the mass between x and x plus dx, would be zero. In other words, the change of mass inside has to be balanced by net mass flux between two surfaces. Okay? So I can write that the mass flux would be the rho u x s and minus rho u x plus dx s. If this is a plus, that means that means mass increase over here? Right. If that is plus, that means the mass coming in is larger than mass coming out. Therefore, this should be positive. Right? So let's, let's write down this part and this part using Taylor expansion. Okay. Change of mass inside. What it is? The mass inside would be rho and then dx and then s. That is total mass. And I want to know the rate of change of this mass with respect to time. Right? Okay, that is equal to this, and this is, what is this? This is rho u x plus d rho u d x d x, okay? And then this has to be d rho u dx dx s and we know that s is constant therefore I can write d rho dt is equal to d rho u dx minus minus right so this relates between density and velocity. So I have one more relation. Okay. Pressure, density, velocity, three basic elements. The relation between pressure and velocity was governed by general Euler equation. And now, by considering mass balance or conservation of mass, in other words, In other words, mass has to be conserved. Okay. We found that d rho dt is equal to minus d rho u dx. The physical interpretation of this is rate of change of mass has to be balanced by mass flux.